Well, as we can see, I'm not your average Joe in long-term care, and I don't have to go on and on, but yeah, I did turn down a job with Donna Karen, and um, everybody said, you're crazy. Do you know how much money she pays? I said, oh, yes, I do. But the thing is, I knew that I'm really not a good employee. Um, I remember I almost got fired once because I was 15 minutes late every day. And some of you in here know, you, you can relate. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but I, I stay late. I get the job done. So, you know, what's the, what's the big deal? So in, in all of this, I came to realize that um, I was chasing rich people's money. And I had a contract. They were supposed to pay me X number of dollars to do their wedding. But in the end, it's like, oh, well, it rained. Well, hello? You're going to blame the rain on me. So I, I was getting ready to turn 50. I said, what's it all about, Alfie? Well, why am I doing what I'm doing? And I've loved it for so many years. But, you know, 50 is a milestone. And so Dad had already been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and, and vascular dementia. And so I said, you know what? Let me try something different. So I became a Reiki practitioner. And in the state of Florida where I live, you can't charge for Reiki unless you're one of two things. A minister, and no, my father was a Baptist minister, so they couldn't have been another Reverend Duval, or a licensed massage therapist. I said, oh, that sounds like fun. I'll go back to school. And so I did, and I, I practiced for about three years. Um, about that same time, my sister was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I became her primary caregiver. My ex, he was diagnosed with oral cancer, so I was taking care of him. And then he got a second relapse of it. So all of a sudden, this health care thing kind of was calling me. Um, and about three years ago, um, I was asked to, to head up the National Certification Board for Alzheimer Care. And so I ask you, who cares if you provide dementia training? Well, I do. And <laughs> the, the, the uh, managing editor of provider said, you have to use this in your presentation. She says, did you have that created? I said, no, it's actually on a little app. I said, but the thing is, they should have made me smile or given me some funky hair. So um, I care. Um, and when I took this job, I said, oh, this is easy. You know, getting long-term care leaders, convincing them that their staff should be nationally certified and, and provide training. That's a, a piece of cake. Um, <laughs> hello. Boy, was I in for a rude awakening. Um, I remember going to a convention in Michigan last year, and it was a, the, dementia, the Michigan Dementia Care Experts. And they shared their experience of a th three-year grant to provide dementia training at no cost. And the program was a complete failure. And I said, why? I said, well, the first year we, we spent the time trying to convince everybody that it was important. I said, OK. It took you a whole year to do that? Yeah. And then when the, the second year of the program, people kind of got excited, but there weren't that many people who signed up. And the ones who did sign up, nobody showed up. So I, I asked them, will you be doing, using these CMP funds again? They go, uh, we don't think so. So I'm scratching my head going, OK, it's free. But we all know it's not free, because you've got to provide for the training time. You've got to provide. You pay the, the staff to, to go or to bring in new staff or double team the staff so that they can go to training. So, so obviously, I care. I don't know if the people in Michigan care, but I care. 
<laughs> my dad cared. And it was, it was such a suffering experience. And yes, I said suffering. And all of you people who are on the bandwagon for politically correct, we have to use the word suffering because our residents suffer. The families suffer. My mom suffered. Us four kids, we suffered. And I will never, ever apologize for this emotion. Because if you guys don't realize it, and Jessica, she shared with you, this is what we go through every day. And it lasts forever. My dad's illness took 13 years before he finally died. The last five years of his life was spent in a nursing home. And my mom was forced to put him in a nursing home. She didn't know this. My mom had to go to work full time. And my dad was fine. She'd make his, his food, leave it at home. Although she did make him grilled cheese one day, and he came home and he goes, Wanda, I, don't, I think you're trying to poison me. And she goes, oh my goodness, what'd I do? Well, she was in a hurry getting ready for work, and she <laughs> burned one side of the grilled cheese and didn't know it. And my dad, even though you know some of the senses were missing, that one was acute. He thought my mom was trying to poison him. Well, he knew that she wasn't, but so it devastated her. So one day, my dad had a really, really bad meltdown, which he never had. Um, so she went to the doctor's office to ask something about, you know, did he need some medications or something? Well, everybody was on lunch break, and the social worker was there. Said, Mrs. Duval, is your husband home now? Oh, yeah. Um, is he left at home very often? Oh, yeah, I work full time. Hmm. Can he dial 911 in case of an emergency? I don't think so. He can't re work the remote control, so I don't know. He doesn't call me at work. Oh, Mrs. Duval, we have a big problem. According to the laws of the state of Florida, you've got 24 hours to rectify this problem. Either you quit your job, you find someone to come into the home to take care of your husband, or you put him in a nursing home. What's a woman to do? She hadn't planned this. I mean, she knew eventually that she would have to make a decision, but it wasn't. She, thank God it was a Friday, because she had till Monday. And what's really great is she found Orlando Lutheran Towers. Now, I grew up Baptist. So, never mind. Um, <laughs> the church said, you know what, y y y you're sick in the brain, so you know what, maybe you should not be here anymore. You, you might hurt somebody. So they, they made him resign. Hello. Well, that's really a lot of love, isn't it? So anyway, so here my dad was Baptist his whole life, and now he's going to the Lutheran home, because the Baptist didn't have one, I guess. So mom found this really great place, and everybody was so well-trained. I mean, everybody. Housekeeping, and take notes, by the way. Housekeeping, stay in touch with them, because they know when a resident or someone in their care, and it, they're not, it's, the, the people aren't in their care, but they know when things are going awry. Because let's face it, we know a resident knows how to hide the soiled things, don't they? There's little places over in the corner, and housekeeping, it's their job to find it. And guess what? What better way than to know what's going on with your residents? CNAs, they are the sacred warriors. That's what I call them, because let's face it, they could go somewhere else and make more money. The thing is, utilize them to make sure that your place is a success. I don't care if you're a short-term SNF, a long-term care, assisted living, home care. Your lifeline is the people who spend the most time with patients, residents, whatever you want to call. Now, 
I don't know if you guys remember, but at conference here in San Antonio, Mark brought a whole bunch of CNAs up to a lot of tears. Um, but this is actually a photograph of conference that Jessica was talking about, where he asked, okay, stand up if you walked more than a mile to work. These people walked more than five miles to get to work. And there was one girl who walked 10 miles to work and home. Raise your hand if you would do that. Yeah, I didn't think so. And she did it in the snow. They do it because they care. If they are well-trained, and, and I mean in all aspects, but especially in dementia care. Jessica referred to the fact that she went to the Alzheimer's wing. I've talked to many CNAs who are forced into that on their first day of work. Now, it's interesting because, you know, the state of Florida is a, thought to be a leader in, in uh, dementia training. The Florida statute says that a new hire has up to 90 days to be trained in dementia care. And they put an hourly basis of four hours. Now, tell me this. What can you teach a CNA in four hours that they haven't already learned from dementia patients in three months? And what's really good is that we are, we are talking about now, and with the new proposed regs from, from CMS, the word competence. Competency. I'm really glad that the Alzheimer's Association has come out and said that we should not be concentrating on how many hours it takes to train, but the staff should be competent to practice in providing dementia care. So it's, it's interesting because, um, again, here in San Antonio during the not-for-profit day, I asked one of the CMS leaders, said, okay, so competence, competency, um, I know that's a buzzword. Uh, how are you going to assess this? It was a little leading question. I said, um, do you think that there might be something new coming down the pike that will assess whether or not you have trained your staff? And her reply was, I'm quite certain there will be. So if you aren't getting ready for all the other stuff you got to get ready for, there's going to be some kind of an assessment for your staff. So, Families care. This photo was taken the day of my dad's funeral. And <laughs> the smiles on our faces because it was finally a relief. And it, you really do need to remember that, there, that we all have these emotions. But families care if the people that they've entrusted you with to provide care. So remember that in your, in your quest for excellence and quality. Last year, there was a survey, and it pitted owners, administrators, managers against DONs, HR people, directors of education. And they, they asked the question, do you realize the importance of training of direct care staff. And of course, everybody agreed. But where the divergence took place was, are you willing to pay for it? And I think you pretty much know how the survey went. The people that own the place and run the place and are responsible for that say, well, we believe it's important, but you know, we already have to spend. Everybody else on board says, You've got to invest in it. Um, and I'll just ask a quick poll. Does everybody here realize the importance of training, especially dementia training, for your staff? Raise hands. How many of you spend $100 a year per staff member 
for dementia training. Now, the big guys, that doesn't count the, the salary of your director of memory care and your director of education. So factor that out, because you'll hit that number. It's a small price to pay, because do you know what it costs you to not provide training in dementia care? Can you spell CMP? Because guess what? That's what it's going to cost you. If, if the surveyor comes in and sees that the staff does not know how to deal with your loved and revered elders, because they are, the, the, the staff is so stressed out. No wonder there's a turnover, because they, aren't, they're not, they don't have the equipment to deal with it. They do their best. And I got to tell you, like I said, it's the sacred warriors. They do this because they love it. And I'm sure most of you here in this audience do it because you have a passion for it. Or you, especially you wouldn't be here right now. But I charge you that remember that at some point you may be faced with it. It might be your loved one. It might be you. You might want someone that knows how to take care of you. You know, the fact that we, we call it, I, and I call it what it is, bad behaviors. And the thing is, some people want to say, well, we want to call it the unmet, the, the the unmet needs, they're communicating their unmet needs of a desire for something that they might need, and they're creating problems for staff. Hell, they poop their pants, and they're sitting in the corner, and nobody's spent any time with them. Of course they're going to cuss like a sailor. So you've got to make sure that people know what to do with those things and those people, and that remember that all behaviors are forms of communication. I'll say it again. All behaviors are forms of communication. So I ask you, who cares? Who really cares? You should. And I'm calling you out today. Make sure that your staff is trained because you're going to need it one day. Thank you very much.